Hello everybody and welcome back to Mass Effect Legendary Edition where I'm just so excited! Freaking Oh my gosh, Anderson, I think that was just a tiny that was a tiny bit too far, I'm not gonna lie. That that head turn I didn't like it. Oh my gosh, I mean I think we've done Oh my gosh. Look how beat up it looks kind of. I love it. Also, for some reason the like menu button has a bit of a hard time. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So we've got some new stuff, everything. Yeah, no, I'm good. Let's go. Stand by shore party. Decontamination in progress. Is that is that Jennifer Hale? Is that Shepard's voice actress? Captain Anderson. Survives a hundred battles and then gets taken down by back. I thought that politics. said bedroom politics. Just watch your back, Commander. Things go bad on this mission, you're next on their chopping block. Captain Anderson should be the one in charge. It's like I'm stealing the ship from him. Yeah, the captain got screwed. But it's not like you could have stopped it. Nobody's blaming you. Everyone on this ship's behind you, Commander. 100%. Intercom's open. If you got anything you want to say to the crew, now's the time. Yeah, we do things my way, but... No, this is... Uh, I like this moment a lot, honestly. This is Commander Shepard speaking. We have our orders. Find Saren before he finds the conduit. I won't lie to you, crew. This mission isn't going to be easy. For too long, our species has stood apart from the others. Now it's time for us to step up and do our part for the rest of the galaxy. Time to show them what humans are made of. Our enemy knows we're coming. When we go into the Traverse, Saren's followers will be waiting for us. But we'll be ready for them, too. Humanity needs to do this. Not just for our own sake, but for the sake of every other species in Citadel space. Saren must be stopped, and I promise you all, <laughs> Ashley. we will stop What is it. Ashley doing? <laughs> well said, Commander. Captain will be What stopped. is she doing over there? She keeps doing that every now. Like, Ashley wouldn't do that pose, necessarily. You know what I mean? Like, and also she did it, like, twice. Like, I get, like, I, when I'm nervous, sometimes I do that. I do that exact gesture when I'm, like, nervous and don't know what to do with my arms. But, like, you know that she's doing it and she's doing that little, like, hip wave because the guys are like, we can't have her be too tomboy. We gotta make sure everybody knows she's got an ass, <laughs> you know, and that she's a lady. It's like, oh, my gosh, calm down, boys, calm down. Anyway, I feel like that speech is pretty inspirational. The captain gave up everything so I could have this chance. We can't fail. Yes, ma'am. Also, yeah, I, I always kept that in mind a lot. That, like, I don't know, Anderson... Anderson made me who I am, kind of. Like, in a lot, like, you know, obviously, like, depending on your background, like, you know, he can... You, you can make yourself, obviously, but, um, having a mentor like Anderson really does help encourage your growth, you know, and you can kind of take after your mentor in some ways. And heck, I just, I just, I got very attached to Anderson right out of the gate when I first played this. I was like, Space Dad! Commander, something you need? How's the Normandy performing? Is she everything they said she'd be? She's the best ship in the fleet, if you've got a pilot who knows how to handle her. Balance isn't what you'd expect. Takes a while to get used to that oversized drive core we got stuffed in the back, and her power can sneak up on you if you're not careful. The Normandy's probably too much ship for your average Alliance pilot, Commander. Lucky for you, I'm anything but average. Mm -hmm. I like to know my crew. Mind if I ask you a few questions? <laughs> I can see where this is going. You did a background check on me, didn't you? Well, I'll tell you the same thing I told the captain. You want me as your pilot. I'm not good. I'm not even great. I am the best damn helmsman in the Alliance fleet. Top of my class in flight school, I earned that. All those commendations in my file, I earned every single one. Those weren't given to me as charity for my disease. I love this part where it's just like, you're just like standing there with like your hair blowing back. You're like, huh? What are you talking about? Are you sick? You mean, you mean you didn't- I told you I wanted to ask oh, questions. Crap. Okay, I've got Vrolic syndrome, brittle bone disease. The bones in my legs never develop properly. They're basically hollow, too much force, and they'll shatter. Even with crutches and my leg braces, it's hard to get around. One wrong step and crack! <laughs> it's very dramatic. <laughs> but I've learned to manage my condition, Commander. Put the Normandy in my hands and I'll make her dance for you. Just don't ask me to get up and dance unless, 
You know, you like the sound of snapping shin bones. It's pretty, like, uh, poetic in a way, right? Where, like, a man who can barely walk can fly the stars in such a way, like, in an extra phenomenal way. That's probably what they were going for, honestly, but... I need to know more about this Brolix syndrome if I'm putting my ship in your hands. Yeah, of course you do. It's an extremely rare condition. Nobody knows exactly what causes it. Genetic, maybe. It's treatable, but there's no cure. They classify my case as moderate to severe. I was born with over a dozen fractures, hip, thighs, ankles, my bones were already breaking in the womb. A hundred years ago, I wouldn't have survived past my first year. Lucky for me, modern medical science has turned me into a productive member of society. How do you do your job? Like, it's just... Some of these questions are kind of phrased oddly, you know what I mean? You're not gonna break a bone trying to fly the ship, are you? Uh, I don't fly with my foot, <laughs> Commander, so I'm fine as long as I'm in this chair. I gotta be real careful when I get up to take a piss. <laughs> I can do my job as well as anyone on the ship. Better, actually. So don't worry. Like, he's had to deal with this crap his whole life, right? Like, anybody with a disability would know. It's like, you know, I, I am fully capable of doing like, doing things, like, you know, just maybe slightly differently or with some concessions. But, like, my actual thing, like, like for Joker, like, his actual job, he's phenomenal at, you know? The only time I think this would become an issue is, as we'll see in later games, when there's an emergency, you know? Uh, and the ship gets boarded, you know, like that kind of a thing. <laughs> and although to be fair, it's only supposed to be his legs, not his upper body. And when you grab his arm in Mass Effect 2, he's like, ow, like you broke his arm. So maybe that was something they forgot that it's not, it's not his whole entire body. It's just his legs. Um, and then, yeah, in Mass Effect 2, again, when you have to play Joker and run around the ship and it's like, ah, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but no, it would suck to be like have everything about you questioned, right? Like your your achievements, your abilities questioned on something that like you have no control over and you've learned to work with and excel in spite of or despite of, you know? So it's gotta be incredibly frustrating. I'm not trying to make you uncomfortable. Let's talk about something else. Whatever you want, Commander. He's so grumpy in this one. I feel like in later games, they start to bill him more as, like, the funny guy who's just, like, snarky. Not necessarily... Like, in the first game, I feel like he's very grumpy funny. He's not necessarily snarky funny. Why does everyone call you Joker? It's a lot shorter than saying Alliance Flight Lieutenant Jeff Moreau. Plus, I love to make little children laugh. Hmm. You're dodging the question. Look, I didn't pick the name. One of the instructors in flight school used to bug me about never smiling. She started calling me Joker. Mm, and it's <laughs> Why didn't you ever smile? Hey, I worked my ass off in flight school, Commander. The world's not gonna hand you anything if you go around grinning like an idiot. By the end of the year, I was the best pilot in the academy. Even better than the instructors, and everybody knew it. They'd all got their asses kicked by the sickly kid with the creaky little legs. One guess who was smiling at graduation. Right, like, it's, like, he's got a massive chip on his shoulder, but it's not unwarranted. You know what I mean? Uh, I think that, ooh, I think that's it for him. I have to go. All right, see ya. All right, bye. Be nice to me. Even though I ask stupid questions, kind of. Hey, Presley, how's it going? If anyone has to take over for Captain Anderson, I'm glad it's you. I'm not sure about having non-humans on our ship. Oh my gosh. We're all on the same team here, Presley. With all due respect, ma'am, that's what they said about Nihilus. Look how that turned out. I mean, it's not like he didn't do anything, you know what I mean? <laughs> Speak freely, Presley. I want to know if you have a problem with non-humans. It's not that, Commander. Humanity has always handled its own problems. Saren attacked one of our colonies. We should be the ones to stop him. We don't need their help. It's truly not just our problem, yeah. And, like, I, it's stupid to look, like, help in the face and go, nah, you know? Like, it's one thing to be, like, all independent and stuff, but, like, it's not a bad thing to ask for help or to take help when, it, help when it's offered, you know? Besides, this isn't just our issue. It's everybody's issue. Some people think asking for help is a sign of weakness. That's just being stupid and stubborn. Yeah. No matter how strong you are, allies stupid can make and stubborn. you stronger. I guess so. Maybe I'm just stuck in the old ways of thinking. But don't worry, Commander. This won't be a problem. Good, Presley. How did you end up assigned to the Normandy? I signed up with the Alliance as a navigator right out of school. 
following in my grandfather's footsteps, I guess. My first posting was on the Agincourt. We were one of the first reinforcements to arrive at Elysium after the Blitz hit. <laughs> Those raiders were no match for an Alliance frigate. Of course, the only reason the colony was still standing was because of you, Commander. I can't believe you held out as long as it's you It's so fun to get the little call-outs to your backstory. How'd you end up on the Normandy? I got my officer's commission after Elysium. Must have made an impression on the right people. Captain asked for me when he was picking his crew. Nice. Carry on, Presley. Yes, ma'am. Bye, Presley. Is this this just goes downstairs. Hello, 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 everybody. <gasps> wait, 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 wait. Oh my gosh, I'm ready. I'm ready. Show me the galaxy. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited to read all the planet entries in high definition. <laughs> Supposedly constructed by long extinct proteins, this colossal new space station serves as the capital of the Citadel Council. And there's a really nice gravity thing. Zoom out, and they flip the they flip the zoom out and exit in the next game, and it's very confusing. Oh my gosh! Even even not in the high definition, the galaxy map has always been extremely beautiful. Like the nebulas and stuff that they make were always beautiful. Oh my gosh! Also, if you'll notice, I don't know. You, probably noticed but like if you look out the front windows where Joker's at you'll see the um the docking bay because we actually haven't left for space yet which I like that little detail the RS dig site and the Artemis town mm, yeah let's get going and then I'll go around around talking to everybody Spado which one I think she's in the Gnosis no Gnosis system I think she's in the Gnosis system. We don't actually know where she is, technically. We just know she's somewhere in the Artemis Tower cluster. There's my baby! Oh my gosh! Like, how did they make such a beautiful ship? I should reread. Oh, I did hear about a recent patch that did, I thought they were gonna do this. Okay, so, many of you who have played it probably know. Since the beginning of time, aka when Mass Effect was first released, that load, that screen with the mass relays has always been incredibly loud in the original. It was just like, Bwah! it was like inception noise, you know, like every time you traveled. And when I would stream it or record it, I could never ever talk through it. And I even had to like take my headphones off a little bit sometimes because it was so loud compared to the rest of the game. And I remember complaining about it before, right? And then I started playing the Legendary Edition and I thought they had tuned it down, but they did not. They had not, <laughs> in everything they had fixed in this game, I guarantee you, it was like way at the bottom of the list of things to be fixed and upgraded. But I was kind of hoping they <laughs> would fix that noise and they didn't. But a more recent patch has come through as far as I can tell, because I've been in and out of service and stuff, you know, for weeks, like I said, I would be. But I did see that they had a, a recent-ish patch that, um, well, I guess not at this point that you guys are watching this, but the most recent patch, I think, had, um, did dial down that Mass Effect relay noise, and I can tell. I can actually tell. <laughs> I just thought it was funny, I saw that patch, I was like, hey. <laughs> oh, man. Are you guys ready for the scanning? Oh, I'm so excited to scan this. Give me the medals. Give me, give me all the medals. Give me the medals. All, not just like, you know, mineral medals, but also the like Solarian medals and all those other things. I, I love this so much. Arcanis, a small hydrogen helium gas giant, has been developed as a full feature of modest stop over for ships hauling materials from Therum. In addition to a powerful magnetic field to dump to drive charge, Arcanis has a largely automated infrastructure of helium through refining and deuter deuterium, deuterium, deuterium mining on its many water ice moons. I always read these. I love them. I realize I might be in the minority, and sometimes towards the end I stop reading all of or I'll read them myself and I'll read them out loud, but Terrestrial war, all of with nitrogen, methane, atmospheric, 
increased amounts of hydrocarbons. This frigid surface is mainly composed of water, ice, and hydrocarbons. Slush much of the surface is not solid enough to support a full weight of landing ship. If approach is necessary, you shuttles or keep to the mass ship's mass effect envelope up. Dang it. I was trying to read that as fast as possible without messing up. <laughs> Therum. It's Therum. Armeni, Armani, Armani. It's a it's Armani. It's a terrestrial world with an unusually thin atmosphere for on xenon. I remember this one. Some of these planets I remember. There's also an amaranthine planet. I can't remember exactly where it is, but it's a beautiful purple jewel color, and it's named after the city in Dragon Age Origins Awakening expansion. Anyway, its surface is composed of silica with deposits of carbonaceous materials. The initial flyby probe of the Armani detected multiple areas of the equator with oddly regular surface protrusions. This is why I like reading these. I can't breathe. Closer investigation revealed these as millions of elaborate trips of a few below the surface with left by a long space variant species called the Zyof. Many humans, the universities wish to perform archaeological excavations. How. <sighs> Council Law holds graves like the sacrosanct, however, and the matter has been tied up in court for a decade. Frick! We can go through the Prothean ruins, it's fine. I, I get it, right? If you know anything about Nagpra, you know, like the repatriation of, like, you know, grave stuff, like bones and materials and goods, is, uh, it can be a very touchy, touchy subject for a lot of people. But, Frick! In this, this particular thing, I get it. It's like so hard. It's like calling the ethics into question, right? But it's like you learn so much from graves, and uh, and this is an extinct species that we don't know, like because we don't get to know much about the extinct species in in these games, right? Because of the of the fifty thousand year cycles and everything, you know, finding something like this would be crazy, you know. Like they've got to be wondering. Like people have got to be wondering every now and then, you know, like. Like, gee whiz, what happened to any other space-faring species besides the Protheans? Because they did say that the Protheans had an empire, so they had to have had other aliens, potentially, under their rule, or whatever. Maybe they just think it's all Protheans. Yay. Ooh, medallion, yeah! Upon closer inspection, Navigator Press will discover the remains of abandoned Solarian fighter. Only thing it, uh, of interest on board was a League of One medallion. Already got a League of One medallion. Nice. Also, you can scan some of these. It's a small terrestrial world with a trace atmosphere, carbon dioxide, and xenon. It's scorching hot, sulfur. Little of interest in the desolate world. But the planets look so pretty. Even in the original, I always like. I feel like they just put a lot of attention into detail. Like, from the orbit that we're at, you can't see a ton of detail, obviously, but, like, what, what you could see of, like, the planet and the way it moved slowly, I always thought it was gorgeous. I'm just so excited to see it. Like, all these planets from, like, from orbit. It's great. Therum, I'm so good at this game. <laughs> Therum is a distant but rich industrial world claimed by the Human System Alliance. Yeah, well, everything here is named after the Greeks. Uh, this entire system... It's plentiful, heavy metal, the entire cluster. The entire cluster is named after Greek stuff. Plentiful, heavy metals that fueled the recent manufacturing boom on Earth. Core samples, which are the fossils of simple silicon based organisms, indicate them was more habitable in the past than it is at the present. Perhaps this explains the many perfume ruins studying the surface, most of which have been looted by mining corporations. I will personally rip the teeth out of anybody I find who looted. Personally! And chop your fingers off! And put them in place of your teeth! <laughs> it's so frustrating. Like, oh, just the just the absolute greed of like, we can make a quick buck by selling some of this. When you could learn so much, we could like if you look at it from this perspective too, if humanity had just chilled the freak out, these mining corporations had chilled, they could have found amazing technologies if they had actually studied this stuff in situ, like in its place, you know, in context with other objects. Anyway, okay, that's fine. It's fine. We're landing. Also, I'm gonna need my second favorite thing in this whole game, and that's the Mako. I'm so excited. <laughs> so excited for the Mako! Also, I heard they messed with the controls in the Mako, but I also heard that you can get the legacy version of the controls, which I will be doing. Thank you very much. I don't want those newfangled. Commander, I'm picking up some strange readings. Really strange, like off the damn charts. Uh -huh. 
It looks like it's coming from an underground complex a few clicks away from the drop zone. Anyway, I heard they tried to change because I was the one, well, the one thing, but one of the biggest things I was hoping for in the, in the, in the Legendary Edition is that they wouldn't mess with the Mako at all. I freaking love the way it controls. I'm an expert driver with the Mako as long as I have a controller. With a mouse and keyboard, all bets are off. Anyway, I love the way it controls so much. <laughs> I always had an excellent time with it. And I follow a really cool artist, I think Lazare is their name on Twitter, with an E at the end, Lazare with an E at the end. And they, all, they love the Mako too, and I love it so much. They always do such cute little arts. Anyway, I'm gonna make sure that I don't have to worry about weird controls on the Mako. Ah, okay, okay, going into op, no wait. Is it options, controls? Mako camera relative steering. You can toggle between the schemes to decide which one's best for you. Oh, it was only uh, available on PC at the time that they did this on May 17th. Um, okay, hang on, I gotta make sure. If you prefer the old way, to do this you have to go look for Mako toggle, uh, hmm. Toggle it on or off? Toggle to get... Turn on to have the Mako steering controls relative to the current camera direction. Turn off to have the Mako steering controls be relative to the Mako's hull. I assume turning it off makes it the legacy version. It includes changes to shields generating faster and more. Good, because sitting behind a corner waiting for my shields to regen was always a pain. You just sit there for like a solid 60 seconds. And like it. Anyway, I hope I did this right. I assume they would have had the new controls on. New, oh, look at me, I'm already gonna spin, I'm gonna go, here I go, oh my gosh, I'm actually, I promise you, I'm very good. Holy cow, look at the lava. What, why'd they change the noise? They changed, they changed the gun noise. They changed the missile noise, too. I don't like it. <laughs> look at the lava, it looks so cool. <laughs> I'm so excited to try this. When I first played this game, oh my gosh, I died so many times here on this planet trying to get just through this narrow causeway between like lava and rock. Like, I thought it was so mean. I was like, why did they put a lava pit next to the place where you're trying to learn how to drive the stupid thing? And then I fell in love. And then I fell in love. It's fine. I don't actually know if I changed the controls the way I wanted it to. I hope I did. It seems it feels normal. I should maybe experiment with the other way. Hang on, it's coming. Yeah, get out of here. XP if you try defeating them eh. on foot. Also, probably everybody knows this, but um, all the enemies when you're in the Mako will only target the nose of the Mako, so if you fight them, I messed up, if you fight them head on, eh, it's bad, but if you fight them from side to side, that's where it's at. Am I doing this the way? Is this controlling the way I want it to? I don't think it is. Maybe it is. I'm just messing up. 
You just gotta make sure that when they start firing, that you move your nose and your butt out of the way. Because, you know, you can move your nose out of the way, but your butt's still gonna get hit. Anyway, I remember learning that trick online. Like, hearing about it online and being like, why? It changed everything. I think somebody told me maybe in the YouTube comments forever ago. When I played this, they're like, yo, did you know? I'm like, you just, you just changed my life. I have such funny clips, too, from tw oh, geez. From Twitch about this dang nab. Ow. Eee. From Odo. There we go. Oh no, I'm getting you to drive right into it! No! I think there is... Oh no, this isn't the one that has the alternate route, I think. No, you're not doing... You're not going the way I want you to go. It used to be much easier to go forward and backward. Let's see. No, I keep, like, turning. I'm just experimenting at this point. Okay. Okay, okay. Woo! That one barely missed me. Only a fool punches oh, the path back in the mouth. There we go. We should sneak around. Ow! Ow! Okay, that that that's I was too far away to trigger the line. Oh no. I'm actually an expert, don't worry about it. I'm actually an expert. <laughs> I'm actually so good at driving the man now. <laughs> oh no! Hello. Hey, you I killed like two turrets and Rex is like only an idiot. <laughs> oh, uh no, oh, no! Oh no! This particular zone has gotten me in many a trouble. No! No! I'm stuck! I'm stuck! <laughs> it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Yeah, the Mako can do anything. Yeah, nobody was close enough. Take down the shields. Where are you guys firing? You're bold. Like I, I, I will admit that you're very bold to fight me like this. For kicks. I'm in a giant tank. I was like, I know there are more of you. Yeah, oh, there we go. Oh boy. Where are you at? There you are. They melt so quickly. Am I playing on insanity? There are a couple people inside. Oh my gosh, we're outside on our planet. We're outside, oh, and I can, oh my gosh, I can, I can switch over to my shotgun now. Or I'll just shot, this is a shotgun squad. Nope, okay, pressing and holding down X just shoots off a freaking mine. It's like sprint, but I really don't know. I just tried to jump. This is not Andromeda. You can't jump. Why am I freaking? You are not, the uh, freaking shields are apparently really good. Mm. <laughs> shields are apparently really good against shotguns. Fire. I just, I almost got eviscerated. I need a better shotgun. No, it's not, none of those are what I want. Maybe I'll actually, honestly, I will have Tali use the pistol. Yeah. I'm gonna have some range. 
Hello? I think that's for the way out. Oh, my health is regening. Is that because we got first aid? Oh, I can level up. That's right. Oh, and my gosh, it's about time. I was having too much fun with the Mako. Anyway, I'm going to go now. Thank you all so much for joining me in the start of our Mako adventures. Get ready. Buckle up, kids. It's going to be great. <laughs> Thank you all so much, and I'll see you in the next one.